talk about quant today, um, along with some recent news that involves one of these financial institutions here. Um, hint, hint, it's kind of like a town. Uh, yeah, that was kind of lame. Sorry about that. But we will also look into a little bit more of uh, what quant is and how it works. Um, I can spend a lot of time on that, and I will. But let's just uh, run through what's been popping up in the news and how that is likely involving quant just based on what they are working with. So quant is basically the uh, crypto project that is concentrating on connecting every other crypto project um, across a lot of other uh, protocols and networks. It is its goal is interoperable ability. Um, so if we look at the standards that they're working with, there's some ISO, uh, there's 222, and uh, there's this other ISO TC 307, which we will t talk about a little bit. Uh, they're involved with the Hyperledger as well. I think that's probably the most interesting name on here, in my opinion, at this point in time. They've got some really interesting uh, enterprise uh, partnerships. So K KPMG is a huge firm. Uh, you have Oracle, uh, Swift, Corda, and XDC as well. Uh, as far as different kinds of G government applications. You've got some uh, involvement with Australia. I think I might have mentioned that in the past. Um, there's uh, something with the UK, I don't know, uh, a patent in Japan, Lack Chain, which is Latin American Caribbean stuff, EU commerce, commercial. Um, yeah. But what I want to concentrate more on in this one is their finance ties, because uh, I'm the most interested in the financial technology applications for crypto. So we have the Bank of International Settlements, the Bank of England, Bank of Canada, I'm assuming, uh, SIA, which I'm just kind of uh, spacing on at the moment, MasterCard, which is the one I was attempting to, to actually hint at, and Nexera, which is uh, formerly known as Alliance Block. Um, I don't own any of, of that at this time. However, I am interested in it. So uh, here's a little bit more on the tech side uh, before we get into the financial news and impact. Um, the TC307 uh, is a blockchain distributed ledger um, code. Uh, it is an international standard that uh, Gilbert Verdian, who's the uh, CEO of the Quant Network, the Quant Association, whatever it's called. Um, and uh, this guy has, has been involved with different finance companies, different go go governments, I mean, all kinds of stuff. Um, here's the actual ISO TC 307 for blockchain and just uh, distributed ledger technologies. If you just go down into um, what is actually in there, uh, you're talking about di digital currencies, carbon markets, um, security, privacy, and I identity. That's where uh, Gilbert Verdian actually has a lot of experience. He's uh, worked in the cyber security space for a long time. Um, smart contracts, NFTs, but most importantly of all, uh, there's the interoperability aspect. So that is available on the ISO.org site. I don't know how much of it is publicly available, but if you're interested in that more, uh, it is out there. So now we get into the actual financial news that everyone's probably interested in and has actually heard about. So the banking giant Citibank will transform customers' deposits into tokens that can be sent instantly anywhere in the world. Uh, and that came out of... 
Bloomberg originally. Um, XRP is a little salty here. Um, uh, they have, or Brad Gollinghouse has said that uh, this will be one of the last banks to, to actually adopt XRP after it's a thing. Uh, don't really know what's happened behind the scenes there. Not too interested. I'm not an XRP maxi. I think it has a lot of potential and I think it will be very successful as well, but I don't think everything has to operate on XRP and I don't really think that's practical either. Uh, the the most efficient option is almost always a combination of a lot of things. Um, so uh, this is expanding upon this announcement. Um, so get, guess where Citibank tokenized d deposits before on the uh, lack chain and over ledger, which are both uh, related to, to, to quant. Now they are ready to launch on a private distributed ledger after years of work and preparation. Now look at the two names in this interview. So if you go down here, you can see the bank, proof of concept, the uh, ID B, ID 8, I don't know, uh, d deposited funds denominated in d d dollars in an account which were held tokenized and transferred using digital wallets. So uh, the name down here comes from uh, well, Black Chain, which is Marcos Allende. Um, if you go into the next one, there's his name again here. And if you look into that a little bit, um, if you go on the Black Chain site, which you'll have to translate into English if you don't speak enough uh, Spanish. I don't speak enough. Um, you can clearly see that they are partnered up with Quant, um, who's one of the few uh, blockchain, um, uh, like direct blockchain providers on this uh, partnership list, at least. So I uh, thought that was interesting. Haven't really heard about this a lot. But uh, I thought it was interesting. Um, and then if you check out what it actually is, the LAC chain networks are the infrastructure that enables the development of a blockchain ecosystem in Latin America and uh, the Caribbean that promotes the program. It's a technology. Ag it is technology agnostic, which sounds like quant and seeks to enable public permission networks with all technologies that can respond to the techno-legal framework of black chain. So I'm going to have to check into that more, but not at, at the moment because it's not our main point here. But let's break this uh, down into uh, Quant's other ties as well, and I can expand upon um, what the prices might look like with the adoption of Quant as I have in the past, but uh, it's always interesting. So the Bank of England yesterday, which this was um, a, cu uh, a couple months ago, but it's interesting still. So the Bank of England said the following, that a synchronized s settlement will put them in a strong position to integrate RTGS, hundreds of trillions of pounds in legacy infrastructure with D D DLTs, which basically equates to CBDC. Um, so the introduction, uh, blah, 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 this is just an announcement. Uh, RTGS is a real-time gross settlement system. I apologize. I uh, went right over that, but um, the Bank of England has a lot of ties on the quant and XRP as well. Um, they are uh, complying to ISO 222 uh, global financial messaging standards, which is important for each of those projects. Uh, it would allow RTGS to interoperate with other asset ledgers, such as land registers, overseas systems, helping reduce 
settlement risk and liquidity costs for a wide range of markets. Sounds like quant. They had already tested synchronized settlement successfully with Project Meridian. Hence, it's on the top of the list for the Bank of England. They have been convinced. Uh, this saw a successful development of a technical prototype of synchronized settlement. And uh, they also worked with the Bank of International S S Settlements Innovation Hub. So that's always eye-opening for me as well. The question is, who is supplying this groundbreaking technology that will integrate RTGS trillions with chain tech? Uh, who would you think it is, right? So to answer this question, we have to look at the participants in Project Meridian, where they tested this. So you have the Bank of International Settlements, the Bank of England, and R3. Um, R3 is associated with Corda, which is associated with XDC oftentimes. Uh, Coadjuve, that's a company name. Um, now here is the interesting part. Quant was the vendor in Project Rosalind, a uh, POC for a retail CBDC and a two-tier CBDC model by the Bank of International Settlements and the Bank of England. The CEO or COO of Coadjute, I don't know about that one, is promoting Rosalind on LinkedIn and applauds it. And that's it's an emoji on there if you're not on that platform. Um, he talks about Project Rosalind Synchronization Project Meridian Synchronization too. It would make no sense to talk about it in Rosalind if the same tech isn't used in Meridian, which makes some sense, right? Add in that the Quant CEO likes the project, and the Quant team has been promoting RTGS interoperability via their API platform, which is the Overledger. Uh, I can only conclude that Overledger is the synchronized settlement text supplier. Um, and it gets better. Yesterday's speech talks about overseas RTGS systems, which makes the reach even bit bigger than, than expected. It is also clear that the UK is ahead of the curve with implementation and adoption. Um, so, uh, so we got some extra things here, which I didn't see. Uh, the Accenture CBDC guy pointed out that they have found a solution for integration of blockchain with existing systems. Um, that uh, sounds like Quant. Uh, you can see Martin from Quant and Accenture CBDC guy laughing together. Um, I've said this before. The financial technology, financial services um, related crypto projects. Those are all based on who knows who, who's worked with who, who can sell to who. And at the end of the day, after all of that, what their experience is and what their product actually does. Quant is one of the prime uh, projects out there, in my opinion, at least. Um, I think that uh, it, it has a lot of potential. Now, uh, I want to talk about... Um, the market cap, because everyone's interested in what can quant possibly hit. Well, I always compare things in the financial technology space. I have to deal with um, interoperability and s s smart contracts, even though it's on a direct comparison. Let's uh, compare this to Cardano. Even if quant had ADA's current market cap, it's a 6.6x. It had its all-time high, that would be 6,529, which is a 71x. I think that ADA, it's good, but it hasn't shown to be very um, adoptable. So let's uh, compare it to Seoul. Um, that is and was much more adoptable. I still think it's good tech. It's just got some issues and it has a bad name now. Um, which I don't think that they really deserve. Um, but if it was just the market cap of 
soul right now, it would be 565 bucks. If it was its all-time high, 5,321 bucks. The good thing about Quant is that it has great tokenomics. There uh, will only ever be 14.8 million Quant out there, and I think we're at like uh, 11 or 12 million in circulating supply at the moment. So I'm really interested in Quant. I pick up a little um, quite often. And uh, I really think that that can be a 10, 20, even 50x if everything ends up right here uh, in the mid midterm 2024 into 2025, just when everything comes into cr cr crypto again.